four point five. What? <laughs> oh my god! This book sucked ass. I gave it a two. <laughs> Welcome to the Novel Universe with your hostesses, Ashley and Dawn. We rate and review the newest and most buzzworthy books. We are true book club girls who don't always agree, but do enjoy a good book discussion. I'm Ashley, the fantasy architect. And I'm Dawn, the criticizer of books. Grab your favorite beverage and come and enjoy our universe. everyone and welcome back to the novel universe with your host ashley and dawn and today we will be talking about spells for forgetting by adrian young this is her adult fantasy debut she is typically ya but she has decided to write some adult fiction like a lot of other authors do and if you are new here welcome back <laughs> if you no, i said that wrong if you are new here welcome if you are not new, welcome back. And how we do our podcast is we will do a quick overview, which is just Goodreads. And we will do our rating. Ashley and I do not talk about the book at all. So I have no idea if she liked it or not. Then we will go into a spoiler free dislike and we will end on a positive note and do some likes. And then we will go into our spoiler edition where we will tell you before we do spoilers. So you don't have to worry about that. Did I miss anything? No. I don't think so. All right. Get it. You did, girl. All right. Let's get into this description, which is very long. And I'm going to read the first paragraph and the last paragraph because otherwise I'm just going to basically tell you the whole book. Mm. <laughs> A rural island mm. steeped. Yeah. Let me do it. Over. Start over. Yeah. <laughs> A rural. I rule. The word rural is hard for me to say. A rural, rural. island community. Rural. Steeped in the mystical superstitions of its founders and haunted by an unsolved murder, it's upended by the return of the suspected killer in the deeply atmospheric novel. Evocative and compelling, Spells for Forgetting is a vivid exploration of lost love and the unraveling of a small town and its many secrets. Okay. Ashley, what did you rate Spells for Forgetting? I gave it a 4.5. What? <laughs> sucked ass i gave it a two <laughs> This ought to be interesting. Tell me why you hated it. Because maybe I missed something. Well, I mean, I think I think that's what we're gonna get into in our first dislike. Did you have any dislikes, Miss <laughs> Four Point Five? <laughs> I literally just have like um like a few nitpicks. Wow. Like they're not 
yeah, it's not really like a terrible situation for me. Okay. So do you want to wait till we get into nitpicking? <laughs> nitpicking time. I'll, I'll wait for you, girl. You go for it. You steamroll oh. on ahead. <laughs> okay. Okay. You well. Go for it. All right. <laughs> Okay, so this book had no character development at all. And the little of it that it had, I have read these characters so many times. They were so flat and boring. Emery, snoozebag. August, snoozebag. And I thought August was a woman until it got to his chapter. And they were like, oh. they they said him, him, him. I was like, oh, I thought August was a woman. I, I literally thought it was a woman the whole time. And that could be me. No. That could be just be me. That was you. That was you. Because <laughs> he, he got into the car with the sheriff and he was like, don't talk to me like that, you bitch. I was like, whoa, he this woman is, she is a badass. <laughs> it was a guy the whole time. Anyway, no character development at all. <laughs> Um, this book read like one of those Hallmark TV shows that I hate. I know a lot of people love it and I'm not trying to yuck on your yum, but those shows yum, are super <laughs> melodramatic and have no diversity. It is just, just so predictable. The characters, you've seen them in several other TV shows, several other books. It, it This book had... No magic. I was promised magic and supernatural. I got none of that. Didn't like that at all. Um, Lily, the Lily character was not developed correctly at all. And we'll get into that in the spoiler edition. So bland. Um, what else? It, it, it. I, I felt like this was a Colleen Hoover wannabe. I felt like Adrienne Young was trying to be a Colleen Hoover. And I've only read one of her books. I've not even read any of her romance, but I'm just imagining that this is how, maybe not Colleen Hoover, maybe more like, you know, those books that everyone loves. Once again, I'm not trying to yuck on everybody's yum, but like the love hypothesis and the book lovers and whatever that shitty book we read, The Holiday, what was that book we read by Emily Henry where they you know, they go on vacation together. Like, I feel like it's just that very formulaic storytelling and then they put something a little bit different in there, just like Hallmark movie, where it's the same thing, but oh, she's a baker in a bread factory and now she owns a farm. And in this one, they're going to Hawaii and they're going to be on a reality show. And in this one, she owns a skating rink and it's going to go out of business. Like, it's the same story, but they just kind of change it up a little bit. Girl, I was so bored. So bored. And I was upset because I like Adrian Young's writing. I was excited because I was like, yay, finally she's going to be able to tell like a really good story where she can like really focus on the character development and don't have to have a lot of plot to keep teens engaged. She can have, you know, an adult audience and she can really like do something with her characters and her story. And oh no. But she still has plot though if she didn't have character development in her defense there was still a lot happening in this book girl okay? was it flat? girl there was a lot happening no uh-uh girl can't let you take that one and just go mm, there's nothing there there yes, was there not was. anything happening do you know what i was imagining with this <laughs> I was imagining, and the people listening are not going to get this, but Ashley will get this. I was imagining if this was Lake Geneva with, with, no. with the apple holler. That's what I was imagining. <laughs> the apple holler was at Lake Geneva. For those of you who don't know, like Ashley and I are from Southern Illinois or Northern Illinois, and the apple <laughs> holler is in Southern Wisconsin, and it's like they have like. It's, it's a big apple orchard and you go and you go on a hayride or you can do a corn maze. You know, it's that thing. And I was just like, ooh, the owner of the apple holler 
is abusive and he is whooping his heir's ass and he got he don't want to inherit the apple holler he wants to run off to milwaukee with his girlfriend and he got all these people in town that are just like dependent on the apple holler and lake geneva is like this resort town that in the summertime you know they rely on tourism so i'm like oh it's like they need tourism but they hate the tourists there and this is just the apple holler in lake geneva but not very good I'm dead. You can just take it. That's all, folks. We're good. I can't. <laughs> because I did not see it like that. I literally saw it as, like, like Mackinac Island style. Like, people come to this. What is it? Sarah. Sarah. What is it? How do you say it? Um, Sarah Hughes. Sorsha. What did you say? Sarah Hughes. Sorsha Island. Sorsha. Sorsha. Yeah. Sorsha. Sorsha Island. Whatever. Sorsha. Yeah. They, like, go there, and it's, like, this big, magical experience because, love, this ginormous orchard. And I did not envision apple holler. <laughs> and the <laughs> apple holler. <laughs> Mackinac Island, which is an island in and of itself that literally lives off of tourism, and, like, they cannot survive without the tourists. Like, they can't. They have to go to the mainland for all this other materials and whatnot. And the tourism pays for the winter season. Okay? Don't you be coming at it and saying it's apple holler. It's, it's not the apple, apple holler. <laughs> Somebody burned down the apple it's holler. The There's a it's murder not, in the apple it's holler. Not an apple holler. <laughs> <laughs> There's a murder in the corn maze no. at the apple holler. Oh my lord. Okay, finish your dislikes. Come that on. was that was it. Like it was just really boring. <laughs> Like, okay, so in its defense, there was nothing, like, there was nothing technically bad about it. Like, it had characters, it had themes, it had a story, (laughs) but it was just super formulaic. Like I said, it is Hallmark movies. I'm sorry. If you love Hallmark movies, I love that you love it, but I freaking hate Hallmark (laughs) movies. I hate them. I laugh at them. Because, like I said, it is the same story, but they just change the location. It's the same story over and over and over again. And that's what this was. You've read this story before, but it's just at the apple holler. What? Some of us like the predictability. And I and I love that. I love that you love predictability. That's what we need. Don't be laughing at it. I like, I love... I love rom-coms because they're, I love the predictability of it. And one thing that makes rom-coms cool is the, how they get there, how they get together. That's the cool part, which I mean, some would say that is Hallmark movies. However, it, the ba- the writing on those movies are just so bad. And the writing in this book was just so bland. There was no nuance to Emery or August or Dutch or Lily, like, there was I could have written this if I I feel like if this is a book if I'm reading a book that I could have written it's bad because I am not a writer you know what I mean like this is just I hated this book Ooh, I hated this book I'm so sorry that your journey was not a fun one <laughs> mine was was very good I enjoyed this um yep so you know, do we need to do your nitpicks or is it nitpicking time? I don't have no we nitpicks. Got, it was all bad. We got two minutes for a nitpick. You got anything else you need to add? No. No? Okay. Um, I did have a nitpick or two. Um, and number one for me, it was because there was this small town, there's this like murder, whatever. Everyone's trying to figure out who done it, whatnot. I don't feel like the people that were responsible for the murder saw the appropriate amount of justice. I really don't. Like, that part was missing to this book. Um, and then I did feel like <clears throat> there were some relationship holes. Just a little bit. I, d- I was okay with the holes, though. Because yet again, I literally saw this as, like, Gilmore Girls is off of Mackinac Island. It's no longer, you know, Connecticut, like, whatever. Like, it's just one of those small-town dynamic things and whatnot. So, 
Okay. All right. Likes. Is this just me? Did you have any likes? I have one like. I just I thought the writing was very atmospheric. Like I felt like I was in Lake Geneva at the Apple Holler. Like I felt it. I haven't been to the Apple Holler in a very long time. And I was like, oh, I'm there. She has transported transported me to the Apple Holler. And I appreciate it. So it was it was it was beautifully written. Like like I was there. I was there. Is there islands off of Portland and Seattle where you can go apple picking? Is that a thing or did she make that up? I think she made up the apple picking, but I do believe that there are like small little like islands. Oh, okay. I Interesting. Believe, yeah. Okay. Um yeah, I agree with you. I mean, that was, like, my number one thing. Like, like I'm sorry, but Adrian, she knows how to write, like, a backdrop, a scenic, atmospheric backdrop. Like, you just yeah. feel like you're sucked into whatever time continuum she, like, pulls you into. Um, that was one of my first things I noticed about this book is the fact that, like, it just, it feels like you're on this misty island and that mm -hmm. there's like this hidden thing going around and nobody knows what's going on, but yet everyone still has this like weird like folklore, you know, because the girl died, it's been 14 years and then another guy comes back and they're like, Shh, don't talk to him because he is, you know, uh, number one person of interest, blah, 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 blah. But yet no one has seen or heard from him in 14, you know, whatever. Like, so it's like she, the way that she sets all of the story up, you just feel like you're, you're living and breathing it. Like, well done. Well done, Adrian. Like, I still, I still will read books by her because of the fact that I can get sucked in in a matter of, like, 10, like, pages. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just, like, in. I, I am in. I want to see what happens. Um... For me, she did, like, a bunch of, like, flashback um, chapters, and I actually appreciated those because some people, when they do, like, a flashback, like, back to a memory or whatever, it feels like it's a bunch of information that we don't need. There is a lot of, like, dull space, and you're like, I just don't, I didn't need that. I didn't need that flashback, but I felt like the ones that she provided us, like, back into their life 14 years ago it provided those missing holes that the plot line had, in my opinion, that, that it did not have for present. And I was there for it because I didn't feel like I was getting, like, double information. Let's put yeah. that, like, I'm not receiving something. Um, and I appreciated that because flashbacks are hard to write because you don't want to, like, spoil them. Like, that's the whole point of doing a flashback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is to provide your reader with information that they're missing. Um Let's see. And I really, I did like the idea of like this, like for, um, <sighs> perpetual, perpetual, like magic or whatever, like where it's like, it's not really like, like people have like intense magic. It's more of like, they're like in tune with the island. Like it's like the island's magic, you know, and they're still like hearth mothers or hearth mothers, but it, no, they're hearth mothers oh, where know. like they're, that where the women of the families like practice like um witchcraft in a way but it's more with like herbal remedies and like you know following the wind and like well is what the earth's saying to us like they're it's very much so like they're just like in tune with the world around them versus it being like an unexplainable magic um because at first i was like they have like powers like is this like a thing like you know like whatever but it was more of like this is our book of spells it's been passed down from generation to generation all the women are you know taught it like to be um one with the island if, if you will um because there were like a few times where they were like talking about like, the starlings you know listening to the trees and like all of like this stuff so it just reminded me of more of like <clears throat> just like being in tune with nature if you will and with your body and, and whatever um and let's see i i really did like august and emery's um you know their relationship because i mean they were, they were part of a, a a quad if you will with dutch and lily um and they 
had such an intense relationship that I felt like you could feel their need to be in each other's orbit because it's like they literally could not survive without the other. They were always off kilter without the other one. It was just like if someone was missing a toe, like they had the other toe or whatever. (laughs) But I was there for it though. Because the whole time I was like waiting for this big revelation that like, you know, August goes into this whole big thing and it doesn't end up, you know, doing this whole big thing. It's, it's way more different than what I thought was going to happen. Um, and I like the casual blackmail within the book. I really liked that because there was a lot of it because like it's small town, like people spread things all the time, all over the place. Everyone's scratching someone else's back. Mind you, some of these people should have been in jail for, like, the crimes that were committed by these people, like, all over the town. I'm like, you needed to be in jail. Like, (laughs) how are we just, like, letting people off scot-free by signing deeds and, like, you know, saying or blaming someone so then that way, like, we look at them instead of who it could possibly be or what it's happening, you know, like, this whole big thing. Um yeah I really think that she did a good job of nailing the whole you know small town secret dynamic like most definitely because there was multiple times that it was brought up where you know they would say like we take care of our own like we take care of our own and if you are not of in our circle like we will not help you in any capacity you know you can commit murder (laughs) if it's okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) because you're you're part of our own. Um, and I did like the fact too, if you did not know this, um, Adrian Young puts together a Spotify playlist to go along with her books. I did not listen to it, but I was um, listening to someone. <laughs> um, and they were talking about the fact that they love that, like the music that she selects, um, it really helps you, like, get into her brain and as to, like, where she got these feelings and emotions from um, to coincide with the book, which I thought was cool. So if you haven't checked it out yet, it's on Spotify. <laughs> uh, and that's all I got. Cool. <laughs> so, again, I loved it. I was for the the whole, like, Hallmark thing because, yes, yes, it is, like, somebody leaves and they come back and then history like comes back to them and they have to like face it to move on and whatever. But I, I was here for it. I was here for it. It must've been what I needed in the moment. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I get that. Maybe catch Ashley when she's not needing that feeling. I don't know. (laughs) I thought she did really well, but it wasn't like adult for me though. Like it was more, wasn't quite YA but it wasn't quite adult but I feel like I was okay with it though because it was like there were some like you know some scenes but it was still very modest in a way I guess what makes it adult is their age they're just in their 30s right Right. that's what I'm saying I'm like maybe it's just because like I felt like I could relate to it I don't know so anyway yeah all right well (laughs) That is our spoiler-free edition of Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. And our next book will be Hidden Pictures? Hidden Chickens? What is it? Hidden Pictures? By... Hidden Pictures. I'm prepared. Jason Reculo. Say that again. Jason. It's Hidden Pictures by Jason Reculo. I believe that's how you say his name. Okay. All right. I just need you to say it again because you broke up when you were saying his last name. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, Hidden Pictures by... Do you want to try again? (laughs) No, no, we got it. Uh, Okay, I'm done? Yeah. (laughs) All right. Happy Halloween. Hopefully this comes out before Halloween. It will. And thank you for joining us for Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. If you are staying for the spoiler free, oh, nope. If you are staying for the spoiler edition, spoilers begin in five, four, three, 
two, one. All right. Um, okay. What I was saying about Lily, mm -hmm. I felt like the way her story was told was underwhelming at best. Like this is supposed, this is the classic story of young girl dies. She is beloved by all. Everyone thinks she's a lovely person when in fact she's a monster. She's not really a monster, but she has secrets and she has demons and she's not perfect like everyone wants her to be and thinks she was and everything. But the way that her story unfolds is really underwhelming. Like, I'm like, really? This is it? She doesn't want to date. She doesn't want everybody to know that she's dating Dutch. Why? Does he have cooties? I don't understand why it was such a big secret. And the whole thing about her being in love with August, that came out of nowhere. I was like, uh, there either needed to be more flashbacks or the flashbacks need to have more information or August needed to have more information. I don't know, but it was, it was really anticlimactic. Yeah, that one part about, you know, her not wanting to state that she's with Dutch, which I thought was weird. Like, I was like, but why? Like, why? Like, it's obvious that, like, August and Emery are, like, a thing. And they've been a thing for so long. Like, why is it, you know, this weird thing that you don't want to admit to? But at the same time, it's almost like she... It, it, like what I saw for me it was that you know she just didn't want to hurt her best friend's feelings is what it was because they were so close and it's like well if you share something like that if you admit to something like that um you know it drives a wedge in between but I don't think in her teenage year self Lily I don't think that she was mature enough to notice like you can't just pick a guy and hope that he fills the gap <laughs> of who you're hoping it, it, it is. You know, I think it was more of a, a maturity issue um, that that's probably why um, with that. But, I mean, the whole, it was a little weird that she was in love with him, though, like, at the same time, because I was like, I didn't quite see it. Um, <clears throat> but it's like, I mean, yeah, enough obviously. to kill her best friend. Like, like really? That's some serious stuff. Mm -hmm. But it came I out of nowhere. Too, that, like, Adrian didn't, she didn't set up Lily as well for this, like, really, like, narcissistic, like, personality, like, where she's, like, it, you know, in the mm -hmm. back of her brain, like, wanting to be better yeah. than Emily, 110%. I mean, she does it. You see it a little bit when they like flash back to them, like having like magic lessons from, you know, Emery's grandmother um, and stuff like that, where, you know, Lily's like, but I want the dark magic. You know, I want, I want the hardcore stuff. Like I, I don't want this, you know, just how to put out a fire thing or whatever. She's wanting stuff that's not supposed to be touched, you know, um, which I thought like, that could have been maybe dived into a little bit more just because of the fact that like then that would have set up her like need to feel like she is gonna kill her friend mm -hmm. so she can be with August like if you think about it she literally went through a whole entire process to kill her mm -hmm. like to take her out to take to take her out and it backfired because took herself out you know so it's like um <laughs> Because it, here's here's my thing, too. For the longest time, the way that the book was written and the way that um, Young had set up, like, Emery's, like, flashbacks of that night and having, like, this drowning feeling, I thought that Emery was, like, possessed by the island and that she killed Lily. Like, I thought that that was, like, the big climax, is that it was actually, she's, was actually killed by Emery's hands because the whole entire time, you know, there there's this quote that like was circling where it's like there's spells for breaking, there's spells for mending, but there are no spells for forgetting. And so that whole entire time I was like, but did Emery like 
fake herself out to like hopes to like forget the actions that that were done and then it turns out no i was wrong um but for the longest time i thought she did it like i thought it, it was her like because she's having these weird flashbacks of that night that don't make sense mm-hmm. and are this drowning thing and i'm like okay so like kudos to, to young because i like literally the the longest time I was like, it's totally Emery and she's going to have to face the fact that she killed her. <laughs> like, she was possessed by the full moon. Like, I don't know, the starlings was from whatever. Like, and that's what happened. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I got nothing, that's man. My- I mean, there's not much to spoil. It's- they wanted to keep yeah. the apple holler in town. So they wrote yeah. his name off the days for a different name i don't know they literally forged his name like signed it for him like the townspeople signed it for him and that was like one thing where i was like the whole town is like deserves to be <laughs> put behind bars because they were all in cahoots they were all there like covering for so and so um and like okay well I guess we'll vote on you saying that that's what happened and that's what it will be you know and that happened numerous times in this book like even for August's grandfather because they wanted to keep the island still like in the island and not have someone come and buy it so they had to like make sure it was passed down to someone that they at least got along with or could manipulate um, you know, and that's where like Dutch still came in the picture is because he was still working for the orchard. <laughs> he was still doing it, you know? And, um, yeah. And I thought there was more with the orchard. I was like, is it like the, is it the, the lifeblood of the island? Like other than no. the fact that it's just a tourist attraction. Um, so, yeah, and the whole fact that her parents lied to her about where August was, that broke my heart. That literally broke my heart because I was like, this girl's wallowing away into nothing, and the mom and dad know where August and his mom are. They know where they are, and they won't even tell her. Um, I did like the fact, though, that, like, Emery grew up enough to be like, Dutch, this isn't gonna work, you know, between her and him, like, we were just filling a void for each other. Like, mm-hmm. I was, I was happy about that dynamic. Um, but yeah. That's all I have. Yeah, I don't have anything else. All right. I enjoyed my experience. I'm sorry you did not. Yeah. <laughs> because I think it is probably because I literally thought that Emery killed her. I, I think it's. I think that's why. I was just waiting for it. I bypassed everything else. <laughs> <laughs> like the characters are not developed. I'm like, it's totally her. She totally killed her. <laughs> All right. Well, once again, our next book will be Hidden Pictures. By Jason some such. Don't remember the last name. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's Jason Reculoc. Reculoc? Reculoc. Reculoc, I think. Otherwise. I huh? You can't pronounce it? I can't pronounce it. It's R-E-K-U-L-A-K. Let me see. I think it's Reculoc. Let me look. Reculoc. Yeah, Reculoc. Yeah. Looks okay. Slavic. Eastern Europe, Western European. I don't know. Uh, um, wherever the Slavic nations are. That part the of Europe. The Slavic nations? Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> yeah, like Romania, Yugoslavia, over there. I don't know what part of Europe yeah. that is. Western Europe? I don't know. All right. That's not what you're here for. Thank you for joining us for Spells for Forgetting, and we will catch you in the next podcast.